State tough in the Meadowlands. But maybe even more importantly, Coach Bowden, the ACC avoided one of those black eye embarrassing losses to a lower division team. Hey, I think week one here in the Atlantic Coast Conference needs to be checked up as a win. Yeah, and the one you didn't mention, which even though it was two ACC teams playing each other, uh, Pittsburgh and Florida State, yes. uh, national TV had the nation's attention, and then Florida State really made an impressive showing. So I think that's going to be a, a shot in the arm for the ACC because Saturday night, Clemson was the main show on, uh, made a heck of a statement for the ACC, and then Florida State backed up on Monday night, only show on. So really the nation got it, got a good taste of what – what the potential of his coach price atkinson sitting in here with uh, mark sturgis tonight you know you you've obviously been in a lot of these situations but you know you heard a lot of talk going into the into the football game about you know especially from coach sweeney's in you know that this is not an end all you know uh, uh a game, you know, the loser. This is not out of it. Talk about, you know, as a coach, what you do, and maybe what Coach Rick is facing this week to regain maybe some of the attention of his football team. You know, heading into yet another big game, but a game also, you know, that really could get Georgia back on track against South Carolina on uh, late Saturday afternoon. Well, you know, Dabo's got to say that because if he loses, then you know he got eleven more games left. So mm-hmm. most head coaches will make a similar uh, a statement similar to that. It was not a conference game for Clemson. Had they lost it, they still have won the conference, still have won the BCS game, had an outside chance for national championship. But you've got to say that simply because you might lose the game. It is that uh, Georgia, on the other hand, I think what Mark, will, his approach to that, to that game will be the fact that he went in there with, with uh, and I'm talking, and if I were him, and I think he's going to say something similar to this. You go into Clemson, nationally ranked team, you, you go in there with three defensive losers and eight defensive starters, Lose your first five, best five or six in the first quarter, or whenever they lost them, and and then you come out and just about beat them. So uh, I, I think he'll put as many positive spins on that game as possible. For the simple fact, the media is going to have a lot of the, the, the negative. His players are going to read that. So when Mark gets the team huddled up and the staff huddled uh, huddled up, and he's got to correct the negatives, but he's got to take every positive he can out of that game. Because again, it's not a conference game for them. They can still go to BCS uh, a game and, and still win the con- and their, their conference. So he'll, he'll pick the positive and let the, let the media handle the negative. Yeah, how, and, and you and you mentioned it too, Coach, with um, you know with Georgia losing you know uh, star wide receiver Malcolm Mitchell the other night to really kind of a, a freak knee deal celebrating the the long girly touchdown run. You know what is what what do you get? What do you tell your guys? You know you obviously are, are working with them through the summer. You know to get that next guy ready to step up. But you know what what is what is Coach Rick going to do? What buttons does he press to try and you know maybe take that that loss? You know the loss of such a, a playmaker you know, off the Bulldog roster, you know, what what, what 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 does he do? What is he telling his team? Well, first you, first of all, you challenge his backup. You know, he's going to have to go in there and pick up the slack. But what you do is you, you take those two great backs they got and say, look, are you two guys mature enough? Are you, are you physical enough? Are you good enough? Do you want to accept the challenge of picking up the slack of losing your school wide receiver? Then you take Aaron Murray, take care. You're going to have to raise it, raise it up another notch. So play really smart, no turnovers. Can you – can you take it up a notch? Offensive line, if we got to depend on you and these back, can you do it? Can you elevate your level of play another notch? So what you do is you challenge the team, you challenge the offensive line, as a second, you challenge the back, you challenge everybody up to, uh, everybody else to ratchet it up one more notch, one level higher, because they've lost a really good player and probably don't have one guy uh, to replace them. Therefore, there'll have to be several guys that'll have to elevate their level of play. We're speaking with uh, former Clemson head coach Tommy Bowden, co-host of the new college football show with Bates and Bowden. You can catch it Thursdays all season long on Fox Sports South, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. You know, Coach Bowden, when you came to Clemson and you brought Rich Rodriguez with you, in many ways, y'all were kind of cutting edge with what, what your offensive philosophy was, especially, you know, Woody Dantzler at quarterback. What do you make of some of the storylines that have come out of Saturday night about maybe uh, attempting to fake injuries to slow an offense down. Is that something that when you brought that kind of offense to the table, A, at Tulane, and then B, as you made your way to the Palmetto State, that you thought would be such a, a hot topic of conversation? Well, you know, I, I've always suspicioned any time you run that type of offense, 
and you're successful at it like Clemson is right now, we were when we first came to the ACC, then, then you're going to have to find ways to slow it down. And and, and that, that I'm sure that happened when we were there. Uh, I saw, I happened to see the film clip. I saw the first part of the film clip where that guy got, he did take a shoe in the family jewels there. Yes, he did. Uh, but it was an unusual uh, reoccurrence of the pain. You know, it was a delayed I've been, reaction. Yeah, I've been hit that before. I don't remember taking that long to get, get, uh, get up to my brain. But, uh, so I'm, they'll face that. But again, uh, in a national televised game like that, that happened to be that film clip. Uh, other teams to be careful because I'm sure there are some rules about ethics and uh, ethical things that you do during the course of the game. So that may, might be challenged a little bit. But yeah, we had to face it then. And uh, because Clemson's so successful right now, and they're so efficient with college boy at what they're doing, uh, uh, it's tough to stop them with 11. They don't have to go 11 and a half and a half being the fake injury. Yeah. Well, well, Coach, another team you're you're obviously very familiar with from from your time at Clemson is, is South Carolina, and they obviously, you know, we mentioned it a second ago with the big game in Athens at 4:30 on Saturday. You know, I, I'm not sure how much you got to see Thursday night of the South Carolina North Carolina game. You know, maybe give a couple of impressions what you thought of South Carolina, how they looked in the opener, and then what you see with what Coach Spurrier, what kind of game plan he might go into Athens with on Saturday. Well, that one I did get to see because that we 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 tape our show in Fox on Thursday afternoon, so I saw that one. And uh, the thing that first jumped out at me after facing South Carolina for so many years and watching them recruit and all about their clothing, Coach Hawk and Coach Spurrier, uh, they look like an SEC team. The North Carolina did look like an SEC team. They were really uh, overmatched physically up front, especially defensively from North Carolina and uh, South Carolina's offensive line. But, but they looked like many of things the SEC, and they didn't used to do that. And now for the for the uh, the coach Spurrier, you know, really hanging his hat on defense, running game, play action pass. You know, he just sits and step back there and chunk every time. I think he's really become a better coach at South Carolina than he was at Florida. Florida yeah, had a lot of talent; those guys would make plays. Uh, you could you could mess up calling a play, and those guys would cover for you. South Carolina, he, he's really been. Uh, uh, on his game, and they play a very physical uh, type of football is what a lot of those teams in the SEC do. So uh, I look for them to go in there, and right now they, they're really confident against a team like Georgia. You know, they've got a little extra time to prepare, uh, and uh, the Georgia losing that great wide out. I think the South Carolina have an excellent chance to win the game. They, they play such good defense, and I, I think they'll, they'll uh, they say teams make a lot of progress between week one and week two. And, I think South Carolina will, especially with a little extra time to prepare. Now, Coach, uh, in our final couple of minutes, talk a little bit about co-hosting the new college football show with James Bates, the former Florida Gator. Uh, your speaking engagements, my daughter and I came and saw you here in Greenville when you were back here in February at First Presbyterian Church, so you're doing speaking engagements as well. I guess all that's a roundabout way of saying, are you now satisfied? or you Do you still have that desire maybe to scratch the itch one more time when it comes to coaching? If, if the def- desire were strong, that strong, I, I've had opportunities to get back in it. But I really enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, I'm 59, be 60 in uh, uh, my next birthday. I'm in good shape physically, and I feel good. And, and it's just a and you look great. Well, you know, that I, I enjoy running. I and mean, if you're on the beach, you have to because you have an audience <laughs> you have to play to here at the beach. That's so right. You got to do your ab work and your biceps and things like that. So, you stay in pretty good shape, but I could. I enjoy the TV. Uh, I wake up Sunday and I haven't lost a game. I call everyone right. I don't lose any of them. I can uh, sleep on Friday night. I don't show up on Saturday morning. And uh, the faith day speaking is something I, I did at Clemson in the off season on Sundays, where I, in, in a little bit of downtime I had, I was usually doing some kind of faith speak, faith day speaking at churches or men's groups or SDA. Uh, 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 conventions or fundraisers, so I enjoyed that. Uh, I might say never say never. Uh, I spent 32 years coaching and, and enjoyed it, uh, but uh, I enjoy what I'm doing, but I, I see myself doing the other than also. 
Well, I, I tell you what, you delivered a fantastic message as a speaker. I was telling Price here, you actually challenged me to do something that I'd never done, which you said you hadn't done to your late 30s. That's read the Bible from uh, front cover to back cover. And that challenged me, and I did it, and I appreciate it. And people can follow you on Twitter as well at Tommy underscore Bowden. I tweeted yesterday that Tom Ear Zimmerman, all wide receiver, signed up at Clemson. Uh, and so I'm learning how to get into the uh, 2000 first, to, uh, you know, to the modern, modern times of tweeting and social media. Well, Coach, it's been fantastic. Thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Great luck all season long with your show with uh, James Bates, and we'll continue to publicize it here on the station. Hey, y'all have a good week. Thank you. Thanks, All right, Coach. thank you, Coach Bowden. Uh, Tommy Bowden, very, very, very good uh, public speaker as well. Deliver, like I said, challenge me. And very few times in life do I feel like.